they're called party timelines. We meet at a party. I am with Lisa and she is not having a good time because she is hungover and she's usually kind of miserable. We rode our bikes over here together and I am obligated to leave with her. You were standing against the wall next to me and we were watching a guy on a skateboard do a trick in the living room of the party. You were eating a donut and you asked me if I want to lick the chocolate off of your finger. I do it and say I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> we go to the landing of the stairwell and make out. I like the way you pull me by the back of my neck to kiss me and, how, and you like how I softly bite your bottom lip. I leave with my miserable friend when we decide to stay in touch. I bike home and wish I had stayed. You live far away, but you send me an email and we become pen pals, like actually write letters because it is more romantic. We send letters back and forth for two years, each letter revealing more than the last, with promises to see each other soon, repeated, unfulfilled, except for one time when your friend had to be in Philly for a family reunion and you tagged along. But after three months of no response, no letters, and no emails, I feel defeated sending one last letter. Your mother writes back a short note and newspaper clipping with your wedding announcement. We meet at a party. I don't like your cat's t-shirt, but I let you dance to talk talk with me anyway, even though I usually dance to the song with Alex when she is with me, and she is with me. You lean into my ear to tell me that you think I'm pretty and touch my waist and I like it. We don't kiss, but you give me your phone number and I give you my email address, and three days later, later you email me to say that you made me a mixtape. I reply by asking if you want to go on a bike ride. You live further down in South Philly than I do. I drank a can of Diet Coke while biking to your friend's apartment, and I'm not sure why we're meeting at your friend's apartment. You give me the mixtape and let me hold it for a second, then put it in your cassette player so we can listen to it immediately. <laughs> you cook us macaroni and cheese to eat for lunch, but I brought a sandwich to eat and I eat that instead. You talk about vinyl records a lot with your friend who's sitting on the floor. I wish I brought something to read. We kiss on your friend's couch after your friend leaves, but I feel bored, like I'm doing something mechanical but not electric, like chewing. You invite me to a party a few months later and I show up with Lisa. I roll and smoke a joint in your bathroom and Lisa gets drunk on box wine and makes fun of all the cute scene girls at the party because they have three color hair. She keeps saying three color hair. I hook up with another one of your friends. The next week I accompany Lisa to the grocery store in Hatfield where she steals a blonde dye, an auburn dye, and a black dye so she can dye her hair three colors. <laughs> We meet at a party. It is your party, but I don't know it walking in. My friend Naya invited me. I show up alone and you get too drunk and I get too drunk and together we wind up on the second floor landing of your house singing a postal service song that I like at the time. I can't remember if you kissed me because I am too drunk and you were too drunk and you suggest that I sleep with your roommate because he is lonely and I start scream crying, feeling violated and your other roommate tries to put me to bed on your couch with a blanket and the lights off. But I get up and unlock my bike and ride home talking to myself, repeating the scenario out loud with commentary like I was supposed to do earlier in acting class that morning and only got right on the second take. I get home and drink two Diet Cokes while looking at my MySpace page and go to sleep. I never hear from you again or even really think about you until I Google my email address and see that you use my username for the title of a movie you made and put on YouTube. It has 27 views. We meet at a party. Lisa invited me and she knows whose party it is, but I have no idea. I just show up. I roll and smoke a joint in the bathroom and bump into Jenny, who used to work at the grocery store where I work, but got fired because she dyed her hair red. And it's against company policy to have a hair, hair color not found in nature, which is bullshit because there are purplish red flowers found in nature. We were standing against the wall watching a guy on a skateboard do a trick in the living room of the party, and I watch you from the other side of the room in front of the fish tank. Jenny complains about her boyfriend and I nod empathetically. You are finishing eating a donut and you don't notice me looking at you. I don't notice you glancing at me because I'm concentrating on the angelfish periodically. I like the way you dress. I look down and feel my large bangle necklace with my finger and we, then we meet eyes. It's getting late and I have class early the next morning so I get ready to leave, pulling my coat and scarf over my head. You catch me at the door and ask me what my name is. You live far away but you want to send me an email so I give you my email address. You send me an email and I email you back to suggest we become pen pals, like actually write letters because it is more romantic. We send letters back and forth for six months, each letter revealing more than the last, the plan to see each other at the end of the summer when you move to Brooklyn. I take the Chinatown bus up to Manhattan we spend a long weekend together walking from museum to park to diner to bedroom and you take it all slowly and I like that and I write a lot of poems about it in a notebook on the way back because you told me we'd be dating if we lived closer and I'm about to move to Europe for a year. 
We meet at a party. You already know my name, which I feel uncomfortable with because I don't think I've ever seen you and I don't find you attractive. You tell me you were in my survey to British literature class last semester. I nod and say, oh, okay, cool, and excuse myself to the bathroom where I roll and smoke a joint and think about holding out for Chase Love like Britta Mart. Lisa is waiting outside of the bathroom to use the bathroom, so when I open the door to come out and join the party, I go back into the bathroom with her and sit inside the bathroom to roll another joint while she sits on the toilet and complains to me about this boy we call Spindly Indily because he is tall and skinny and he looks like he's into Sonic Youth. After a thorough bitching, Lisa and I emerge from the bathroom where you were waiting outside. You give me what looks like a hopeful glance, but I'm too busy pretending to be cool with Lisa to acknowledge you. Lisa and I go to the kitchen where people we know from work are drinking, and I play with the cat who lives in the house where the party is. Lisa and I leave the party to bike back to her apartment to fall asleep under her Mary Kate Olsen collages. <clears throat> we meet at a party. Well, actually, we meet after I leave the party. You are friends with my friend Sally, who calls you to pick us up from this haircutting barbecue party in someone's backyard in Fishtown. Sally and I took the L to get there, but she thought you might know of a better party happening somewhere. So you drive to Fishtown to pick us up outside of the hair, outside of the house where the haircutting barbecue party is. After I get an asymmetrical haircut from one of the girls at the party, I didn't have anything to drink at the party, but Sally did. I want to do drugs. You have drugs, some kind of pill. We take them as you drive. Me in the passenger seat, Sally in the back seat, singing along to an Alanis Morissette song on the radio. You drive us to a house with a swimming pool in the suburbs where some kids you know are tripping on acid or mushrooms, but they don't have any left over for us. You and I take another one of your pills, some kind of opioid, and everything feels warm and fuzzy, like the soft hair on your arms that I feel closing in on me back at Sally's parents' house on her couch. I don't really want to, but I feel like I like being worshipped. So I let you make out with me and hold me when I sleep, still in my sundress and sandals. You tell Sally the next day that I'm tiny and wonderful, and that's really all I want. We meet at a party. I am with Lisa, and she is not having a good time because she is hungover and usually kind of miserable. She is so hungover that she makes a weird noise when we're in the kitchen at the party when she sees a bottle of tequila on top of the refrigerator. She makes some more weird growling noises, kind of like a grunt and a trill, like a vocal fry of disapproval, until someone tall places a hand towel on top of the bottle. Lisa and I rode our bikes over here together from the coffee shop, where I sat in a booth and drank, and drank a large Americano, and Lisa opened one of the malt liquor energy drinks she bought with her fake ID from the liquor store. For some reason, we call it the cop shop. Lisa's ID is a real ID, but the name on the card and the person in the photo is not her, just another generic white girl, but she's never questioned on it. We came to this party to have a good time, I guess. But I think we more or less just like the idea of parties, because a lot of the time Lisa and I just end up in a corner talking to each other by cupping a hand to the other's ear, as if to let anyone else know that this is a private conversation. <clears throat> we rode our bikes here together, and I'm obligated to leave with her. I'm not really having fun at this party either, because I don't know anyone else here besides Lisa, and I am not drunk, just caffeinated, and I'm feeling on edge, like super aware of everything. I see a, a ugh. I have too much coffee. I see a green piece of plastic with a skull drawn on it in the bathroom while I'm rolling a joint and pick it up and admire it and put it in my purse. I go outside and sit on the steps and smoke the joint. A cat that either lives in the house where the party is or who visits the house where the party is comes out to the front door, which has been left partially open, and rubs its head against my knee. I pet the cat and think, you were the only friend I've met tonight. I finish the joint and go back to the party because it is cold outside anyway. I take my coat off and put it behind a chair and I want to socialize, I guess, because I'm bored. So I stand against the wall in the living room where there's music playing and other people are standing around. You were standing against the wall next to me and we were watching a guy on a skateboard do a trick in the middle of the living room of the party. You say hi to me. I say hi and feel shy. You were eating a candy bar and you asked me if I want to lick the chocolate off of your finger. I do it and say I can't believe I just did that. We go to the landing of the stairwell and make out. It is dark in the stairwell and we are right next to a window so a little bit of blue light is glowing. You have me against the wall and the excitement of the chain of events is almost too much for me and everything feels hazy but I like it. I know I like it. Someone passes this in the stairwell going to the bathroom or something but I don't feel that embarrassed. I don't remember how we got back to the party but we did and maybe that's when we were watching the guy do a skateboard trick in the living room. Lisa finds me and she wants to leave so I leave with my miserable friend. But as I'm walking out, we decide to stay in touch. I buy home and wish I had stayed. You live far away, but you send me an email and I ask if you want to become pen pals, like actually write letters because it is more romantic. 
we send letters back and forth for some time, and it's fun and exciting, and we don't really know each other, but I guess we'd want to, or at least that's what it seems like. What is this, a distraction, a curiosity? I really have no idea. We meet up a few times for long weekends, and it's usually fun and exciting, but it also kind of hurts, like getting drunk together and laying in a park, looking at the stars at night, or walking past the national debt counter and feeling insignificant against all those zeros, but we eventually fall out of touch after a few years because of distance and time, and I guess we're just figuring our lives out. Thank you.